Many YouTubers, like Jason from Painfully Honest Tech, Painfully Honest Tech, think that Apple TV is going to be dead on arrival, but what if I told you that Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus are not competitors in the slightest, but they are in fact synergistic and complementary to one another. I am Mike, and this is Tech247 TV. If you're new to the channel, let me know what you think about the content in the comments below, and maybe consider subscribing. And for everyone else who's been here before, welcome back. Before we get into the details, I cannot express enough gratitude to you. All right, the fans and subscribers, because the channel surpassed 1,000 subscribers late last week, bringing Tech247 TV one step closer to becoming, you know, like a full-time channel, like doing this for you all the time. Now, as part of that gratitude, we are going to start with a subscriber Q&A. You can ask any question, whether it's purchase recommendations, new tech, making videos, my setup, doesn't matter. Let me know what those questions are. You can either ask the questions down below in the comments, or you can tweet to me and make sure that you add the hashtag AskCaputo. Now, let's talk Apple. Even though Apple and Disney will offer streaming services in the fall, I'm really hesitant to categorize the two companies as competitors in the traditional sense of the word. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Mike, what are you talking about? They're offering streaming services. While the content might be different, how can they not be competitors? Now, I think that is a natural conclusion to come to because the companies offer products that are similar in nature. So let me elaborate. First, Disney Plus is not the singular source of revenue, nor will be the most important source of revenue for the company. In fact, we see that media network segments for Disney is a business that's actually accounting for less and less of the company's total operating income. Second, we have, in the broader Walt Disney context, each of the entertainment properties exist to better serve Disney theatrical films, creating a kind of a virtuous cycle. In today's terms, what that means for you is that your kids are watching Frozen, they're going to watch it 10 million more times, they're going to find that song that they love, they're going to want to hear it all the time, so you're going to end up purchasing that through iTunes or Apple. From there, they're going to want to have make sure they have the Elsa bed sheets before capping off the experience with the creme de la creme of a trip to Disneyland thus completing the virtuous cycle for Disney until Avengers Endgame comes out next weekend, and then the cycle repeats for everybody, right? Bringing it back to Disney+, Plus, the entire reason Disney+, Plus exists is to serve as a hook and constant reminder to you and your pocketbook what your favorite universe is, who your favorite character is, and when the next movie's coming out. We can apply the same logic towards Apple and their streaming services. Apple TV+, Plus is not the company's only source of revenue because, I mean, Apple's a hardware company. It is a means to an end to increase the value of the entire ecosystem as a whole. Well, you're probably asking yourself, Mike, okay, I'm kind of get with you there so far, but who's the competition then? Well, if every service that overlaps with one of Apple's core offerings is a competitor, that list is going to get exhausted very quickly. For example, if we think of competition in a very granular manner, CBS, NBC, and even ABC are Apple's competition in the streaming video space because they all are trying to pry consumers away from watching one of their services. Now, by and large, these companies have different business models than Apple, which are anchored in advertising and content delivery is going to be their mechanism, but Apple is not a content provider. If we recalibrate the way that we think about Apple from, say, a hardware company to a company that focuses on delivering great customer experiences that specialize in removing friction to such a high degree, or when you think of friction, it could be money from your wallet, it results in those customers consuming more products and services from the same company. It's not unreasonable to conclude that since Apple focuses on delivering great customer experiences in your living room using differentiated hardware, running customized software, Apple's competition shifts away from the apps that run on a TV or on the phone to anything that takes you away from using the Apple television. This makes the likes of Comcast and Charter the competition. That is because watching television is a zero-sum game, meaning that you cannot use your Apple television hardware if your television HDMI is set to the cable input, which is why Apple is trying to increase the value of the ecosystem so you never have to change the input. All of this underscores my first point why Apple and Disney are strategic partners, in fact, who need one another to accomplish the business goals. For Disney, it's very simple. They want to address as many customers as possible, get them into the cycle using one of the most popular distribution mechanisms for its customers, which is going to be Apple TV and TVOS. And for Apple, they want to make sure that there are no glaring reasons why a customer would need to change from an input on their Apple TV. Because every reason the customer has will weaken on-platform usage time and by extension it will erode engagement. Apple wants to increase the value of iOS and Mac ecosystem and it will accomplish this by digitizing trust in the same manner that eBay or Airbnb has. The outcome of digitizing trust is that consumers find more value in their purchase knowing that the services hand curated by Apple and the services are underpinned on privacy, security, and that they'll find family-friendly content there. This makes consumers less likely to leave the iOS and Mac ecosystem. By removing friction in areas of games, television, and news, Apple purposely increases the friction on deciding when you want to leave the iOS ecosystem. Now, I understand that there are some of you who still think that Apple TV Plus is bound to fail due to lack of content, which I would ask you, 
How reasonable is that of a conclusion given that we know that Apple's been working on some version of Apple television since 2011, which coincidentally happens to be the same year that Bob Iger was named to the board of directors at Apple, and we know Disney has been working on some version of Disney Plus since about 2015. Now, I don't know about you, but personally speaking, I don't find it very realistic to think that Apple, the world's largest technology company, cannot compete with Disney with three years, possibly even eight years worth of notice. Now, while pricing is important, value is going to be paramount. Disney is offering great value for consumers given the low monthly cost and the large back catalog of content, which is great because if you're like me and you grew up watching The Empire Strike Back or even Return of the Jedi, in addition to being a secret fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe because the DC Universe is just so utterly disappointing at this point. Speaking of disappointing, I think that is a great word that some people would use to, to characterize how they felt after watching Apple's March event. But let's put that March event into a little bit different context, knowing what we know now. Strategically speaking, not announcing the price best positions Apple because it hasn't committed to any specific content pricing for the upcoming service. This means that Apple could price the Apple TV Plus very aggressively as a means to an end to increase customer value when they're purchasing a new iPhone and to decrease defection to Android. That and Apple's well positioned to announce how pricing is going to be structured alongside new iPhones and Apple TV hardware in the fall. All of that said, I think the current narrative that Apple TV Plus is dead on arrival because it doesn't have the same content as Disney Plus is missing the forest from the trees. In the same way that Apple cannot become a global news service overnight, it cannot magically create a century's worth of back catalog content. But what Apple can do is leverage its engineering prowess to create amazing experiences both in your living room and on your phone so that you almost never need to use a device that isn't capable of running an Apple service. What's going on everyone? Thanks very much for watching my video on Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus. Wait, do you know how hard it is to say both of those kind of consecutively like 55 times, it's a pain. I had to do this like 15 times. Anyways, I'll put a link to a video here which YouTube thinks you should watch, another link to a playlist here, and then a random video next to that. Let me know what you think about Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus in the comments below. Make sure you are subscribed because I have a lot of content coming out and I will talk to you in the next one.